everyone, welcome. I am Paula and today's video is a little bit different. We are going to be sitting at the table and making a Christmas centerpiece. And we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, Ed and how he has been coping over the past two months with dealing with an injury and being you know, pretty much homebound. And he um, is just gonna share some tips on what he has done throughout the past two months to get through this uh, difficult time for him being pretty much laid up. So we're just gonna have him share a little bit while we sit at the table and work on this centerpiece. Um, this is an edible centerpiece, by the way. I am actually making a hot drink right now so I can sit and sip on it while we're sitting there. And I'm gonna be using Element for my hot drink today. I'm gonna be using the chocolate raspberry one of my new favorites for a hot drink. And I'm just gonna show you how I put it together. I have some hot water over here to the side and I'm just going to fill a mug with some hot water. And I'm just gonna mix in a packet of the chocolate raspberry. I also like to take this and add a little bit of heavy cream, just makes it a little bit more decadent. And so I'm just gonna pour a little bit in there and then I've got a really delicious hot drink and if you're wondering what this little packet was that I showed you this is an electrolyte drink mix it is very clean these are sweetened with stevia there's one flavor that is just unflavored it is called the raw it has no stevia in it if you are sensitive to stevia or if you're not doing any kind of flavors or sweeteners you can also use the raw if you just want to have electrolytes the ingredients are very clean there's no junk hidden in them they have a science backed ratio you can see right here of sodium magnesium and potassium everything you need when you're on a low carb diet to replace your electrolytes right now element has a special offer for my viewers if you go to the link that is right here on the screen at drinkelement.com forward slash low carb revelation. I'll click on that link, make a purchase of anything on the website and Element will send you a free sample pack like this one with eight different flavors. So you can try a lot of different flavors and see which one you like best or it is the season for giving so you can gift this to a friend if you'd like to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go sit at the table and get everything out for this centerpiece that we're gonna be making. Thank you Element for sponsoring this video. Okay, so we have our little spread here of things, feeling crafty. I always feel crafty around the holidays. Um, I have an inspiration picture. I didn't think this up on my own. I saw several of these over on Pinterest. So I will put my inspiration picture, my inspo of um, what I saw. And I'm like, I'm going to make that. I'll put it right here. But this styrofoam cone I picked up at Walmart. And I think it was like $4.00. Um, and it, this, I think it's about eight inches tall, something like that, eight or nine inches tall. They have taller ones at craft stores. If you have a big table and you want to have a tall one, you can get a taller one. You could even do two of these on the table if you have a group of people. So I have a bunch of different charcuterie items here. Um, that we're just going to use toothpicks and we're just going to stick them into the styrofoam and kind of fill it in. And while we do this, Ed's going to talk a little bit about just the recovery process and um, things that he has done over the past couple months just to um, share. And we're just going to put this thing together. So um, should be fun. Say whatever you feel like saying. So. First of all, it was a big shock having a compound fractured leg and the accident and all that. And there's a lot of emotional trauma that goes along with it. You know, like I, I keep, re especially right at first, I kept replaying the accident over and over in my head, you know, and I could still hear the metal crunching sound over and over too. It's not very pleasant um, to, to have to re reoccur, you know, always remember that but you know that that's part of it um, I'm sure if you're just having a regular procedure you won't have all that to deal with right. so that part should be easier you know 
Um, the biggest thing that I, I could say is having an awesome support person helping me. That's the biggest. Who would that be? That'd be you, baby girl. <laughs> That's the biggest, most important thing because without her, I don't know. I just don't know. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that go through your mind, you know, during this process. Like I've been down for two months and I finally got to surgery almost to the day, two months to the day. And uh, I'm finally now on the road to recovery and starting to have some progress where I can start getting my life back, which is awesome. So excited about that. And Go ahead. Um, there's, you know, a lot of things. So I've had a lot of in-home nursing, occupational therapy, physical therapy, which the last two, they couldn't do much because... Like I have bursitis in my shoulders and it's flaring up now that I'm using the walker to get around. So it's been difficult um, for them to try to give me uh, things to help me, exercises and whatnot to help me. So uh, uh, also like the medication, I was really paranoid about getting addicted to some of this pain meds. Uh, and I've been keeping that on my mind a lot. So I've been slowly weaning myself off. Um, before the surgery and then now again, I'm on them again and I'm starting to begin to feel a lot better, less pain. So I'm beginning to start thinking about weaning off again. And uh, so it's not, not so hard. You have to be careful not to uh, miss your timing, you know, take your pills on time so you stay on top of the pain. It's when you lapse in time and your pain gets out of control and you take two, trying to, you know, bring that pain level back down. That's where you get into trouble and you start to uh, get into the addiction part of it. And in mobile, is extremely hard. Like she said, I'm a pretty act active person and it's been just really super tough trying to just sit on the couch all the time. Very difficult, very, very difficult for me. So um, it's getting more normal, I guess, doing that. I've become a little more comfortable with the idea of having to sit around. Um, I still don't like it, and I want to get back to normal. And it, it's strange because you, your mind plays a lot of tricks on you. You know, I'm, now I'm beginning to wonder: Is my leg going to be the same length as it was before? And the doctor told me the bones could be a little shorter. So, you know, is that going to give me a limp? Is it going to give my hips problems? Am I going to have to wear a special shoe? You know, all these things play on your psyche. So, um, there's that. Um, just having things at arm's length has been very helpful. Having a phone charger close by, um, having urinals to have to use for men. It's been kind of, don't really like doing that, but you know, I can't use the walker to walk to the bathroom all the time because it messes up my shoulders. So I've been told by the nurse and the physical therapist, just, you know, just rely on your urinal. Just do that, you know? So, um, there's that, um, having clothing that I can wear that's applicable for my condition. Um, she bought me a nice pair of, uh, like sweatpant material type, of pants that have snaps all the way down the legs so that I can unsnap and have room to make, uh, accommodations for that external fixator. That was very nice. Um, being careful to watch your diet. Wow, that star is cool. <laughs> Being careful watching your diet while you're you're down is a big deal. You don't want to pick up a ton of weight because uh, then you got to shake it afterwards. That's going to be difficult. It's been good uh, for me being on this type of diet uh, lifestyle, eating lifestyle that really uh, I've, I've been able to lose weight. So it wasn't a big deal. Right. I've lost 20 pounds since I've been hurt. And uh, I'm excited about that. So there's there's emotional things you're going to go through, the different thoughts and just crazy stuff running through your head all the time. You know, it's just, it just, it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with and process, but having a good support person and good health care and, and a, a good outcome from surgery has certainly helped tremendously. Diet so, was, you talked a little bit about diet, and I think the diet is huge oh, during this time. Very, very much. I remember the nurse telling him, when he went home from the first surgery, that actually after surgery from like a broken bone or something and, and someone is immobile, they gain weight. So she told him to be careful mm -hmm. 
you know, watch what you eat and that kind of thing. And he lost 20 pounds. So also there's um, the food that you're going to get in the hospital is no bueno. So you're going to have to contend with that. Activities are important. You can't just sit there and play on your phone and watch TV. It gets boring real, real fast. So I've been blessed enough to have uh, awesome subscribers that have sent me things in the mail. I've got puzzles, coloring books, word puzzles. Model cars. Model cars. Those have been a lot of fun. Just different things like that to occupy your mind. I've, I've downloaded a couple of games on my phone just for laughs and giggles and I'm not a real techie type of person so it's kind of difficult for me to do some of that stuff yeah. um, but she's helped me a lot she brought down a video game for me uh, in an OTV we have set up upstairs so I sat there for a day or two and played on that till I got bored with that uh, but getting bored quick is a problem is it happens very very often and quite fast I'm not a big reader I'm not a big writer um, I did take a lot of time and organize the phone numbers, names of people, different things that I needed to remember or mm -hmm. be able to recall, dates of the accident, dates of the surgery, um, all those kind of things. And I made a couple of lists, one for myself, one for my mom, one for the hospital. And I've been able to refer to that quite often because you're going to probably, you know, for me anyways, I was on the phone a lot with a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons and I had to re refer to that list quite often so that was been a good thing that I did I was I've been able to revise it and shorten it a couple times and kind of drill down on that so that that's been pretty helpful uh, the diet is huge good food oh so good I was so <laughs> happy to come home and eat her food instead of that hospital food um, that was a really big deal protein shakes mm -hmm. lots of protein I so, you know, yeah, it's looking pretty sweet. I know, right? I want to eat it. <laughs> and went through a lot of emotional ups and downs. There's a point where I got really kind of depressed. Um, just wondering if I'm going to be normal again. And I've uh, been doing a lot of research on YouTube, trying to find out other information. Like after I had the surgery, I all of a sudden came up with this bright idea. Hey, let's look up you know, fib tib fractures and see what other people have gone through so I can kind of know what to expect because the unknown part of it is really quite trying, you know, as you're trying to think of what's going to happen next or all that kind of stuff. But having some of that knowledge has been really helpful to be able to kind of keep your mind on course and not wander uh, wildly and coming up with all these crazy scenarios because when you don't know, you tend to overcompensate and get carried away with stuff that's just not true or not factual or just not, you know, it's not going to happen like that. So knowledge is power and that's been very helpful. And talking it out. Big time. A lot of conversation has really helped a lot um, to make sense of it all because it's pretty wild, you know. Mm -hmm. It's getting a lot of, a uh, lot of love from family and calls and you find out who your real friends are, that's for sure, and who really loves you. Yeah. And it's been um, really good. I have a pretty big circle of friends and family, so uh, even acquaintances have called me, and workmates have called me, and you know that, that means a lot. It means a lot, especially when you're down a little bit. They, they call and then you just, it just boosts you right up. Uh, another thing for me is I've been helping. I, I do HVAC for a living, heating and cooling. And um, I've, I'm a trainer now in my job, and OJT, I'm a job trainer, and we've just been doing a lot of hiring recently. And then I had the accident, so I have some students that are new, some employees that are new, I shouldn't call them students. They have some knowledge, but they don't have all of it, and so I've, I've gotten a couple of guys that have called me when they're stuck on jobs, and been able to talk them through on the phone and kind of get them pointed in the right direction. That's been really pretty cool because mm -hmm. it keeps me connected to the job in a way. And uh, that's helped a lot. So, you know, just uh, keeping your mind busy is really the biggest part of it. You can't just sit there and be humdrum and oh me, my. and mm -hmm. Have a positive attitude. And you have to stay it's up. Hard. You have to stay positive. It's very hard. Yeah. Very hard. And it's easy to succumb to the bad thoughts and to go down rabbit holes and stuff. So Ed has some certain things that we ordered from Amazon 
He has like a reacher grabber thing. Yep, big. He has, um, like he said, he has his phone charger right nearby. He has um, a little trash can. We've been hanging a little paper bag. That has been a great a idea. A little lunch paper bag on the side of the table just for like his, just his little trash. Gum. And just everything right at his fingertips. So think about. It makes it easier for her. She's not constantly having to run around and, right, and do all the little things. Yeah. And think about like. Um, things that you need nearby have a basket. He has a, um, yep. I have a basket with all of his paperwork, all of his um, notes and all of that so that he can, um, if he needs, to, if he gets a phone call and he needs to look up something, um, he's got it right help. there in a basket big right help. next to him. Yeah. And it's not like cluttered all over the place. I'm the type of person I, things have to be kind of in order or I can't relax. So um, when he first I'm came, not like that. <laughs> when he first came home, there was like stacks of like paperwork around him and everything. And I got a little basket, put everything in it, and it's right there. It's got a little handle on it. It's easy for him to access. So if you're going to be like a caregiver, think of things that um, you can do to um, have, a, you know, to make things more um, accessible at reach. Yes. At reach is the key. Yes, activities. Uh, coloring books, word search books, um, uh, puzzles, anything, um, you know, that you can just keep knitting, crocheting. It was funny when he first got injured, <laughs> everybody was saying, learn to crochet, watch YouTube. And YouTube is awesome because you can like yeah. learn to do stuff. If you want to learn an instrument or you want to learn a new language, um, you can like just refer, refer to YouTube. But um, just just having, having that you know that stuff prepared ahead of time if you're having a surgery that you know you're it's coming up and you you know you want to be prepared right. this is something that obviously we had to learn as we went because right. we weren't prepared for this to happen so we had to kind of learn as we went but if you have a planned scheduled surgery um this is really awesome it is um if you have a planned scheduled surgery you can prepare do it ahead of time and right. have you know things like that you can take some time put some thought into it something i wanted to share um we used he has he had he has had wound care all the way through and uh the hospital sent us home with a couple of those uh like uh Blue, changing blue and white pads yeah the changing pads like plastic on one side cloth on the other or you know absorbent cotton on the other uh we used those under his leg while he was draining and while i was um I, me or the nurse was changing his bandages and that and i looked on amazon and if you look those up in the medical like section they're expensive if you go to like family dollar or walmart or somewhere and go in the pet department and you buy the pet Wee wee pads that same you know when you're thing. training, they're the exact same thing. Exactly. And it's so much cheaper. Yeah. So we ended up getting a big pack of those for like I I think it was like seven or eight bucks for a big pack of them. So just things like that. Um, you know, it just makes it so much easier. I have an Amazon list that I actually put together over my Amazon store for things that I have purchased for him over on Amazon to uh during this time. Um, I'll link that down below so you can just check out some of the medical supplies um, that we've done. But it's if, if you know if it's something that you're dealing with that is unplanned, um, you just gotta kind of roll with the punches, keep a positive attitude. I think po uh, having a positive attitude is everything. Absolutely, um, it really helps with healing. Uh, you know, even when we first started with all this we were having to deal with learning to get in and out of the vehicle, yep. um, learning to get around the house. In a and, wheelchair. Yeah, we did a lot of different things, but now it's like we, we've... we Come second nature almost. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really getting through it really well. One of the things I had to struggle with when I first came home was trying to get up the stairs backwards using the walker or crutches. That was very difficult. So if you have something upcoming that you know is gonna happen, like a knee surgery or whatever, you can practice some of them things a little yeah. bit at home before you go, so you can build up muscle memory and yeah, kind of idea. figure out how you're gonna do this and instead of trying to figure it out on the fly when you're trying to get in back into your house. Yeah, That was a big part. Also, having all the right equipment was, was key. I can have a walker, crutches, wheelchair, bedside commode, hospital bed, wheelchair mm -hmm. ramp, amongst other stuff um, that's been very helpful um, to be able to 
cope with all this. Yeah. Uh, one uh, other subject I wanted to touch on real quick was like haircuts and shaves. It makes you feel so much better, mm -hmm. more normal, makes yep. you feel clean, yep. being able to, to do that. Luckily, I'm married to a hairdresser that's extraordinaire and I don't have any problem. I haven't paid for a haircut in over 35 years, so at least 30. And uh, so that's been very, very helpful. Yeah. Um, having visitors is very uplifting. Uh, we get a lot of love from our lake community here. I'm sure once I go home, I'll, I'll have friends down there and family coming over and that'll, that helps. Um, it really does. Cause it, you know, when you're down and you're hurt, it really plays hard on your psyche, you know? So, you know, thinking ahead of those things, it makes a big difference. And let people, like it was hard for us to let people do stuff for us. Yeah. We're not that or, type of people. Or we, ask for help. Yeah, we we do everything. Yeah. We're self-sufficient. Yeah. And it was very hard and humbling in the beginning to um, ask for help and to even let people, our neighbor next door here, he's 92, 93. 93. He's very, uh, very in good shape for his age. And ever since this has happened, he has come, we, we don't have uh, a trash, trash pickup pick here on this, you know, in the, on the lake. We have to take our trash to a transfer station. And it's about a mile, mile, two miles away. Mm -hmm. And um, he has been coming and every other day, getting our trash out of our cans and putting them in the back of his truck and going to the transfer station for us. Every single time he's gone to take his trash, He's taken our trash. Gigantic and help. In the beginning, I was like, I'm not going to, I don't want somebody to do that. Like that's, or him especially, you know, and it was really. He insisted, he, really. He did. But it was really hard to accept that, accept that and let someone do that. And um, what a tremendous help it's been. Though. Yeah. I mean, I could do it. I could load my Ed's truck and take the trash, but just letting him do it, letting people want to help. And just letting them have a little job that they can do. Let people help. If you are not that type of person, let them help anyways. Yeah. And um, people want to. Yeah. They want, when people say, uh, uh, now some people may say, oh, let us know if you need anything. And <laughs> they don't really mean it. They might just be like, you know, wanting to be nice. But most people, I think, really are ready to help. Yeah. If you are, if, you know, if you're, um, able to let them help you and I would say let them because um it, it helps them and it also helps us you know Big and time. so I would say go ahead and do that because it's so it's so important help us I've so. had to lean very heavily on my wife and for every little thing and she's been extremely uh, helpful and she's wow. never complained she just she's <laughs> on on the ball with it and it's emotional for her I mean, it's constant and it's embarrassing things too like bathroom stuff and yeah but it's you know. what you do for your spouse right i mean you yeah. just do it so i i owe you a big yeah it's it's just something that you know you do um you do it out of love not duty yeah and it makes a big difference i i, I can feel the love i would do it all again hopefully you never will have to but um, I would certainly do it for her. She said it before. You would do it for me, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is beautiful. I love it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> when it was when it when it first started going together, I'm like, I don't know. But now that you fill it in, oh, by the way, this is rosemary. I just bought the the little packet of rosemary um, just to stick in there to give it some greenery and it smells, I love the smell of rosemary. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it. And, um, it really helps to fill in all those little cracks. Running out of room. Running out of room, running out of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, it's been a great learning experience. Um, humbling, a lot of healing. The diet's been extraordinary. The nurse has always said that how well it looks, no infection, how quick it's healing. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you can get something out of all this. Yeah. Um, we just kind of did it on the fly. We didn't really have anything written down or no. nothing. We discussed it just a little bit before we started filming. So it's pretty cool that we can just kind of roll with it like this, you know. With this keto channel that I have, that we have now, <laughs> it's like become a big part of this channel. Um, but 
a lot of people start watching these type of videos because they're facing um, health issues. And I've seen, you know, comments from people saying that they or their spouse or their friend is um, facing a surgery for, uh, you know, knee replacement or hip replacement. And I just kept thinking about it and um, thought that, you know, it would be it would be so nice for Ed to share. A lot of love, you know, all the people that said they've been praying for us and they haven't stopped. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that has been gigantic, gigantic help big time. So if you're one of those persons, we truly appreciate yes. and love that. If you are a person who lives alone, you're not married or you don't have someone, you know, that lives with you, that's going to, that is going to be there for you to take care of you during your time. I just want to reiterate, don't hesitate to ask for help. Yep. Um, yeah, you can't do it by yourself. You can't. No way. And, and it, it's something that, you know, I think that it's something that is very hard for a lot of people mm -hmm. to ask for help, but yeah, it's, I'm one of them. yeah, we're both, we're both always have done that. So. so things are going very well and progressing finally, like I said, and I'm very happy to be doing that. It makes it a lot easier. Um, pain subsiding. So that's good. And I have a brighter outlook cause I know, you know, since things are moving along, oh, that's beautiful. It's so cute. Since things are moving along, it's it's easier to deal with it, you know. So yeah. that's been really cool. Yeah. So yeah, take it, take each day um, in stride, one day at a time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you got to look to the Lord, and yes, that's big. And whether you're a believer or not, it's nice knowing that somebody up there is rooting for you. You know, at least it makes a difference to us anyway. Yep. We yeah. eat it now. I wanna wait, eat it. wait. I want to. I have to take pictures for my. Thumbnail. That's awesome. It's different than the traditional like um, charcuterie board. You always just throw the cheese and the sausage and all that on there. I just thought it would be really pretty to have it as a centerpiece. I think it would be really pretty to have maybe some like lettuce leaves or something around on your platter. And for people who eat crackers, you could put some crackers around on your platter, um, some keto um, crackers, whatever. Look at that. Beautiful. What do you all think of our charcuterie tree? I think it's cute. Mm -hmm. Nice job. So I went to Aldi and I just bought a bunch of, Aldi has a lot of, uh, they have a cheese section, um, you know, with the meats and the cheeses. And I just bought up a few things. This wasn't very expensive to make. Um, like I said, the, the styrofoam cone was from Walmart and you could even pick up, you know, I got some raspberries. Oh, oh, I didn't even show it. Talk about what we put on here. Um, you can kind of see, uh, but we did, uh, we did salami, pepperoni, uh, turkey. I really like this brand right here. True story for the lunch meats. They have really good, um, clean lunch meats, uh, cheese cubes, uh, blueberries, uh, raspberries. tomatoes, raspberries, olives, uh, cheese curds. Those are Cajun cheese curds. I think that was a really nice little project and a nice little opportunity to share. Yeah, covering my face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to share a little bit of Ed's, you know, yep. recovery. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you really soon. Have a great day and God bless.